Sorry about that. Some of you know that I went to the hospital on September 25th for the same thing. At that time, they did an enhanced CT scan. When the doctor came in to give me the results, I recorded him. I posted it on my group. I posted it under my name to YouTube. Tried asking him questions. He was more or less trying to shush me, shut me up to get me out of there. Meanwhile, while I'm trying to ask questions, he puts his hand on my arm like this and says, now Tara, we just done a very expensive test on you today. The most expensive test that we do at the Dartmouth General. Who's had that happen? Is that proper behavior? Proper conduct? When a patient's there because they're not feeling well, do they really give a crap how much the test cost? He said it came back normal. I sort of beg to differ. I don't even think he really read it because when he first came on his shift, he had a psycho or he had a social worker come in and see me. First thing she said about was anxiety and stress. The only main stress that I have is what's happening to my body. When he did the ab abdominal CT scan, he did from here down. And what's really happening is from here up. And I've told them. And if you watch the video, you will actually see in the video, that's, that's what I told him. Join my group. Tell your story. Get it out in the open so that we all can do something about it instead of complaining about the medical system and the lack there of them doing their job. When I was there on Monday, just past, January 6th, I was told that there was 63 people at Emerge at the same time and only two doctors. Some people think sometimes, well, you look fine. I look fine because I don't want people knowing that I don't feel good. The only people who know that I'm not feeling well are my family. And they're frustrated. And it hurts. Because you feel alone. You can't talk to anyone. I've been told before, a lot of the doctors can't be wrong. Well, yeah, they can if they're all following suit. Class is, well, some people say white smock syndrome. And when they have that in your file of stress or anxiety, what have you, Everyone's supposed to follow suit. They're supposed to basically treat you like crap. So you won't want to go back to the hospital.
and I don't want to go back. I feel like something bad's going to happen. There's periods throughout the day where my body will go into convulsions and I want to go out like unconscious but I force myself <laughs> to stay awake. Everybody knows when something is wrong with themselves. If I'm depressed, I'm the first to admit it, and I'm the first to make an appointment. Or I ask for antidepressants. I know that anxiety or panic attacks it doesn't feel like you have frostbite. But when you go to the hospital and you're considered minor, you're left in a hallway. So there's nothing hooked up to you to show that when this stuff happens that there's actually something going on. There's no blood pressure machine. There's no oxygen thing. Right now, my lips are cold. The roof of my mouth gets cold too. I get bubbling, cracking, popping, feeling, all right in here. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't want people around me because I don't want them seeing it. I don't want people to know. Yes, I do go out. I go out to sing. Yeah, I put makeup on. <laughs> makeup hides it all. Sorry. My hands are very cold. I called 811 today and they didn't think I had an emergency. <laughs> because my hemoglobin was normal. <laughs> Please, everyone, look up. Abdominal bleeding. Because it can come from acid reflux. <laughs> Nobody could ever be a vampire because if you're swallowing blood, it makes you very nauseous. Monday I went to the hospital because of the acid feeling and throwing up and nothing coming. But right here to the point where I was literally screaming and crying and I didn't even do that in labor. Honestly, right now, I would rather be in labor in what I'm going through. I would not wish it on my worst enemy, no matter how much I hated them or despised them. I had a friend back in 2010. He had bad acid reflux and he was eating candy, dumps, like candy. Well, when we got back, we found out he was in the hospital 
in intensive care. Because he was having trouble breathing. Which, I have a lot of that. It's like something's closing off. And I've described it before that it feels like I'm drowning my own body fluids. I think there's been a few times where I've started going into shock, but I guess you never know how powerful the human brain is until you're really determined. Am I going to die? I don't know. Someday. We all do. When? We just don't know. We could walk out of the street tomorrow and get hit and gone. <laughs> but... Like I said, we're all one alone. But... We can be a rock together. There's nothing for us to do. I've contacted the news, the news, they don't even contact me back. It's like they don't want to get involved. I keep all my medical documents. Paranoia? No. <laughs> Just know how the system's been working. <laughs> I wanted to run and go back to Alberta, where I got medical treatment before. Don't have the money for it? Not gonna ask anyone. <laughs> but I have told someone that if anything happens to me, it wasn't because I took my own life. And I told him, did you have an autopsy done? I am sorry for crying. I have just been going through this for so long. And I can't hide it no more. I hope that you all listen and hear what I'm saying and start standing up for yourself. Because if you don't, no one else is going to. They're just going to keep getting away with doing what they do. And that's saving the mighty dollar. Everyone have a great day. I hope you're all having a great week. <laughs> Drive safe. And stay safe.